<sighs> it's 1 a.m., and after scrolling the socials, you finally hit the sack. The last thing you see as your eyes are drifting off to sleep is that cool, futuristic art piece hanging in the hallway you got from some garage sale years ago. Wait, you left your bedroom door open? Big mistake. About half of home fires happen at night. If it ever happens to you while you're sound asleep, a closed door could be a matter of survival. Just 40 years ago, we had around 17 minutes to escape a burning building. Today, we're down to 3 minutes. And that's in the best case. Fire has become faster, and we have the furniture in our homes to blame. Nowadays, it's made of synthetic materials that burn faster, hotter, and give off toxic gases compared to the natural materials homes used to be filled with. A closed door gives you back the precious time you need. It stops fire from spreading into your bedroom as fast, and you stay safe for a while. The door also gives you the gift of clean air. Locked in the room, you can breathe normally, while on the other side, everything is covered in smoke and unbreathable gases. And when a fire's burning, the temperature reaches over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, way more than the surface of Venus, the hottest planet in our solar system. Meanwhile, your room will stay below 100 degrees. That's still pretty uncomfortably warm, but at least you'll be able to bear it until you get out. Okay, so let's rewind this picture. You scroll your socials, get up and close the door, and then drift off to sleep. But suddenly, your sweet slumber is ruthlessly interrupted by some horrible ear-splitting sound. No, silly, it's not me. It takes you a second to realize it's your smoke alarm, and the drowsiness instantly leaves you. The house is on fire, and you need to get out ASAP because the door can't protect you forever. Don't panic and follow these steps. 1. Look if there's smoke coming under the door. If there is, do not open the door. You can't escape, and your bedroom is now the safest place in the house to be. If you don't see any smoke coming from the other side of the door, then 2. Carefully touch the doorknob. Try it first with your hand wrapped in some fabric like a t-shirt so you don't get burned if it's too hot. If it's hot or warm, keep the door closed. It means the fire has reached your only exit and you have to stay. If it feels alright, then try to touch the doorknob with your bare hand. Again, too warm? Don't open it. Only if it's cold can you follow the third step. 3. Carefully open the door. But really, really careful. If you feel a wave of heat, drop this idea and shut the door immediately. If you couldn't get out, use towels and sheets to cover the cracks around the door. If it's possible, wet them. It'll slow down the smoke seeping into your room. Call emergency services, open the window, and shout that there's a fire. Stay near the window so you can breathe clean air and wait for help, assuming you're not on the first floor. If you're near the ground, then, well, duh, crawl out. But remember, don't ever open the window if there's no closed door between you and the fire. If you do, you let in fresh oxygen that will fuel the flames and they'll travel to you faster. If you were able to open the door since there's no fire around yet, you can go toward the exit by yourself. Just remember to cover your mouth with some wet piece of fabric. Bend down and stay low to the ground. The smoke and toxic gases go up, so the air is cleaner closest to the floor. Leave everything behind. Forget about your laptop, family photos, don't take any valuables with you because it'll slow you down. And of course, while leaving, don't forget to shut all the doors behind you too. We already know their superpowers, right? When you're out, call for help and never come back for anything. So remember what woke you up in the first place? Smoke alarms, bingo. Check them once a month and change the batteries twice a year. You won't smell the fire until it's already too bad, so the alarm has to work 24-7 to wake you up before it's too late. Another equally dire situation, being in a car with the engine in flames. The doors and windows won't budge. You're trapped. Before you do anything, turn the ignition off. You have a life hammer in the dash? Great, it can smash the windows in a second. If not, well, buy one. And for now, take out the headrest and slide one of its metal prongs down in between the window pane and the door. Pull the headrest towards you, and the window will instantly shatter. 
crawl out, get at least 100 feet away from the car – that's about the distance between baseball bases – and call for help. And remember, never ever drive with random things lying around in your car. Store all your car supplies – jumper cables, window scrapers, and so on – in the trunk. Anything that's lying around and not fixed down can hit you in an accident. Even a pillow turns into a dangerous object when it's going 60 miles per hour. Ok, here's another test scenario. You're picking up a friend from the mall, and you two are about to head to the lake for a little Friday picnic. You park, unlock the doors, and just chill and listen to music while you wait for your buddy. What did you do wrong? Ah, always lock your car even if you're inside. No, not even, especially if you're inside. It might not be your friend who'll get in the car, and you won't be able to do anything about it. All kinds of suspicious characters out there, so stay safe and take care of yourself.